Hey guys, Mika here, and I'm bringing you a beautiful, beastly baritone ukulele by Mr. John Kennard right here. And, you know, I played a few of John's baritones, and they always blow me away. And um, I usually don't play a lot of baritones, and fun fact about me is that I actually don't own a baritone and I feel like that should be the next thing that's on my you know my ukulele checklist I need I need to own a baritone so that I can go ahead and just fool around with it at home and be at ease and because that's really what a baritone is it's just so easy to play you get the deep rich warm sound it's basically playing the bottom four strings of a guitar but you know it, it's portable because it's in you know the size of an ukulele but you know basically i played a few of john's baritones and they're always it always blows me away of how warm how easy it is how beautiful um, his instruments are so going over a little bit of the details about this this baritone ukulele um, has a torrified sitka spruce top and just for those of you who are not aware of what, what is torrified spruce so it almost at first glance looks like cedar because this is more of in line what color cedar is but basically torrified spruce is you put a piece of spruce or you put spruce wood in a kiln you heat it up there's a whole complicated process but you're basically accelerating the aging process of, of the wood so that when you go ahead and build your instrument and put it together um, the end product or the final product you get a more mature sounding instrument because you have accelerated the aging process and for me i'm starting to understand what this really means because I recently just got a custom koalao with a spruce top. And when I first got it, it sounded kind of closed off, you know, really shy. You know, it's trying to sound really, um, trying to sound really open. And just within like a month of having it or in two months, it's really starting to open up. So I think I'm finally to, I'm finally starting to understand the whole, you know, when you torrify spruce and you like you heat up the spruce to accelerate the aging process, you're basically cutting in line and, and like getting something that would take naturally you know, if I had to guess three, five years, you know, if we, whenever you have like a spruce instrument, it's going to take a long time for it to fully mature and open up and get that, like that nice aged wine, that hundred year old aged wine taste. Um, but for your instrument, um, so torrified spruce is not only really nice because you get that nice gold baked color, oven baked color, um, but you have more of like a finished product in terms of like where the spruce, you know, wants to end up down the line. So again, torrified Sitka spruce here on the top. Very beautiful quarter sawn or just like the, the grain itself. Like if you look at it in the light, just all kinds of different dimensions when you move it around in the light. And you can, you know, if you purchase this ukulele, you can go ahead and see how just really beautiful it is on this instrument. Now on the sides here and then on the back, uh, we have tiger and maple. Uh, very fierce looking and very pretty looking. You can see all of the grain patterns. Really, really nice piece of a tiger maple again even on the sides nice grain pattern um, it's highlighted very well aesthetically um, by the dark koa binding here on the back and then even here on the front especially with this again golden oven baked color with the torrified spruce on the top and then the nice accents with the koa with the tiger maple on the sides you can notice right here of the the sound hole right here and for me, sound holes have been growing on me over the past like year or two years. Uh, basically, what a sound hole does is that when you're playing an instrument, now when you're playing an instrument, you all a majority of the sound is pushing forward or is moving forward. But the thing is, you're sitting right here, so you're actually missing out on a lot of the sound. What you're hearing when you're playing the instrument is say the leftovers of what's not going in front you have some of it spilling over to your face or your ears which is what you're hearing so what a sound uh, like a side part does is that it gives you a very accurate representation of if you were to clone yourself and sit right in front of the instrument um you know turning like the volume down basically this is going to give you that most accurate representation of if you were to sit in front of your instrument or someone played and you sat right in front of the instrument you can hear exactly what this instrument would sound like so it's pretty advantages advantage advantages <laughs> to have a sound hole i kind of wish i had a sound hole on my previous instruments but just gives me more hope to get another custom with a side port in it um so what else have we got here we also got a beautiful rosette accented with koa right here in these four slots and then in these three slots we have mother of pearl really nice um rosette clean simple but very to the point um we got we got a uh, ebony bridge right here. Ebony, sorry, ebony bridge and an ebony fretboard. We also have a radius fretboard, 
And for me, I really like radius fretboards because uh, for me, even even you know musicians, all musicians, all types of musicians, we always like want to be able to make bar chords easier. Um, from, from professionals to beginners to intermediate players and advanced players, we all like being able to just feel better, have an instrument that's, you know, it feels really good to play. And for me, having a radius fretboard just makes it that much easier to make a bar chord or just making these tri uh, trickier chords. And the reason for that is with the radius, you have a slight arch on the fretboard. And if you think about it, your finger has a slight arch. If you want to relax your hand, it naturally has an arch. So for you to make your finger straight and then to leave it like that for a while, you know, eventually it kind of wears out your finger. So just even doing your, making your finger like that, which is what the radius fretboard allows you to do, it just helps make it that much easier to go ahead and feel good when you're playing on your fretboard. Um, so moving up. We have the, the classic John Kennard uh, Z headstock. You can see like we have this little cutout triangle in this corner and this triangle down here. The John Kennard signature up here, uh, ebony headstock accented with that nice uh, koa binding right here around the top, just like that. Yeah, And then it's fixated with some planetary goto tuners. Goto tuners being one of the, one of the best tuners you can put on a ukulele. And then here we have a maple satin neck. And with the satin neck, it's gonna be really smooth for your fingers to move all over the fretboard. Um, but yeah, altogether, beautiful instrument. It's not blingy um, at all. It's really just straightforward. You know, he uses beautiful cuts of wood on the front, back and side, accented really nicely by the koa. Um, just really nice looking instrument. It's a musician's instrument because musicians like us, you know, we don't really want, let's say, super blinky instruments, but we want a really, you know, really good sounding instrument. Um, but it still looks nice and classy if you go show up at a gig, you know, it just it just looks really good to show up with something like this. Um, so yeah, that that's uh, pretty much the specs of this instrument. Now going into sound, like I mentioned earlier with baritone ukuleles, you're literally playing, like if you just took the top two strings off a guitar, this is pretty much like what you're playing. Just like that. It's like if you're a guitar player, this would be like if you hold this G shape on the ukulele and you strum like guitar chord, this would be like a D, like a D major chord, like that. And then this would be like an A major chord, this would be an E on the guitar, but E on the ukulele. So you can play, it. which is really common on a, on a guitar chord progression. But as you can hear from the sound, it has a very mature sound, very nice big open sound, a lot of depth, a lot of um, a lot of low ends. And one of the things that I really like about a baritone, which continues to kill me that I still don't have a baritone, I really need to do something about that, um, is that if you have like 10, you know, you have a nice collection of ukuleles, 10 tenor ukuleles, five sopranos, five soprano, uh, five concert, you know, sizes, the baritone just fulfills something that that can't the that the other sizes can't do the soprano concert tenor and it's always good usually sopranos concert and tenors will always be tuned to the standard ukulele tuning uh, which is the GCEA and but the baritone tuning is unique because it's the only one that has like the guitar tuning um, for guitar players you're more it's it's also a really good place to transition if you're a guitar player because you know if you want to play ukulele. Um, now it's like you're just transitioning to the bottom four strings. And then now when you're ready to take that leap to like a standard tuning, you're already familiar with like the shapes of the chords, but now you can, you know, get your feet wet with the actual standard uh, tuning of an instrument. But yeah, the baritone ukulele sound-wise just fulfills something, that gap in let's say your, in your collection in terms of sound. Like, you know, you can have a low G tenor, low G concert. It's gonna sound really great, but when you have something like this, you just can't really, match that with the other sizes so again really warm sustain is beautiful so sustain meaning if I pluck a note how long does it take for that note to finally die out and to become silent so if I were to press the seventh fret or the E note it takes a very long time for it to die out. And, it, and what I like about it too is that it doesn't just go, duh, it goes, duh. 
I almost like to think like if you like were to jump off a cliff and then you had a parachute, you don't just go jump off a cliff and you splat. Like you jump off and then you're like trying to get down and touch the ground and like come on like t let's touch the ground already so that's kind of like how i feel when i it just has such a nice slow decay and it takes so long for the sound to finally dip off even when i strum like a c chord or i guess a g chord with baritone tuning it's just so nice it just takes so long for it to die out so i always look for a good sustain in any ukulele I play Obviously, I look for warmth, but you know, I'm playing a baritone, so that's like almost a non issue. Like, <laughs> every baritone you play, it's gonna have nice, beautiful warmth. But you know, with, with John Kennard's instruments, it's just it's on another level, really. Now, another thing that I like to look for is the highs or the clarity. So, like, if I go start picking up the frets or the fretboard here, like on the 10th fret, 12th fret, or even 15th fret, there's still a nice nice sustain and really clean you can hear every single note and what's even cool too is that when you add this vibrato or you like you shake the note you can hear every single shake you can literally hear the sound wave moving like that <laughs> Now, baritones, like I mentioned earlier, it's just, it's really fun to play. It's one of those instruments that you just want to, either you want to be on your bed lying down or you're on your couch watching TV or maybe you wake up early in the morning, you drink a cup of coffee and then you're, you bring out your baritone ukulele. It's just something, it's something that can wake you up, you know, in the morning. It's something that can put you at ease if you're having a hard, you know, long, hard day. It's something that can help you go to sleep because it's just so... so mellow so whatever whatever kind of like whatever you're going through with the day the baritone is just so such a nice soothing soothing sound to it especially this ukulele so for the sound sample i'm gonna go ahead and improvise and i'm just gonna keep it very simple i'm just gonna do some some basic finger style just to let um just to show how this instrument reacts with just taking your time and just you know i'm trying to mimic the whole like if you're just you know literally laying down in your bed and you're just like so here we go Nice, beautiful, spacious, just, it's hard for this baritone ukulele not to just make you feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. So here's what this ukulele would sound like um, if you were to go ahead and strum on it. Again, keeping it slow, nice and relaxing. Don't want to try to make it, uh, try to overpower this instrument. So just really, real nice and mellow. 